And welcome back everybody to the FSL Wild Riff Open 3 and we're gonna be your shoutcasters for today. I'm Dash and I'm here with Infinity. Infinity, it's such a cold night. How are you doing today? Well, first of all, I'm feeling cold with a suit and Definitely. it's been such a long time <laughs> since we've last casted Dash. It's been right, man. years, right. well not years, months. Not months years, to man. say the yeah, least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, just been, it's just been months since we last casted. But still, it's still the same game that we both love. It's Wild Red that we're going to be casting yeah. today. And we had a big patch uh, that just happened recently, July 14, four days ago was the last yeah. patch. So everybody is still adapting to what's going to happen with our patch. But before that, everybody, let's just take a look at the brackets and what happened to the games yesterday and here here's the brackets and we're seeing here onto the semifinals we do have grind sky Eris, roy ladies and tuaha and talon esports here onto the semifinals yeah and i'm i'm fortunate enough to see these teams play especially chua'a and also talon mm -hmm. esports play yesterday they were phenomenal yep. and it's just interesting to see or in, i'm excited to see how this would turn out and yep. is grind sky Ares going to be once again the reigning champion for wild rift open 3 or is there going to be another team that will yeah. contest that here today yeah i'm really surprised that we are still seeing the strong grind sky areas this might be the most vulnerable that they can be because we're now starting the tournament in where we have a new patch that is when everybody is still adapting but one thing that i can say though is that maybe this patch is really just oh just working in favor of Grand Sky Eris' meta, because right now they're also adjusting to their team. They're adapting to what happened, because right now their mid laner has been changed. They have a change of roster, and that's why they still have this adjustment period together with the 3.3 patch. And I'm still surprised that they're still here, strong as ever. Yeah, I mean, they're pro players. They're professional yeah. players. Grand Sky Ares won the gold medal in SEA Games, and Definitely. Just a couple of days yeah. back, Dash, we were playing and mm -hmm. we lost both games. So, <laughs> I mean, there's a clear difference between pro players yeah. and, you know, just Definitely, us. man. <laughs> Definitely. And we can see it. We can see it. That they still adapted the meta pretty greatly. But also, we won't discount the fact that Boy Ladies is still also a strong team that we can see. They oh, have definitely. been dropped a single game. And this is why we can see that this might also be a close game that we're going to see today during the semifinals. Because right now, the least sin of 1996 x 2005 or should i just call her 9605 is really great and that's what i'm afraid of i hope that grind sky aries knows how to answer this but royal ladies they also have a lot in their bag for sure yeah and royal ladies in addition to that was also the one who defeated talon esports 2-0 in the group big, stages yeah. and yeah. remember talon esports two of their members represented thailand for dc games so when it comes to experience, it's Talon Esports who has this massive knowledge and having yeah. massive foundation when it comes to the Rift. But it's yeah. Roy Ladies who beat them 2-0. So it's going to be oh. exciting how this would turn out. Is Grind Sky Ares going to stand up on top? Yeah. Or is Roy Ladies going to pull them down and go to reach Grand Finals? Ooh, they have been building, Grand Sky Ares has been building their Queen Dom since uh, Wild Rift Open. And this is interestingly enough, the Tyrants, or rather, they have been the strongest overall for FSL. And I'm excited to see on who's going to be there to defeat them, to take them down from their throne. And that's why I'm excited. Whatever's going to happen here would be probably one of the greatest things that we're gonna see is either uh grind sky areas would stay on top or would they be toppled down by whoever is gonna be facing them onto the grand finals or rather even in this semi-finals with roy ladies yeah this is everyone's um awaited series everyone's waiting for this they are the defending champion grind yeah. sky aries and just a while ago we were talking before the game or even the broadcast has started grind sky aries has a couple of changes in the draft. How will they turn out? Like, it's yeah. just going to affect them hugely with AA now going into the mid lane and yeah. Angelila filling the role of the jungle. So, yeah. is it going to affect them drastically or not? Mm -hmm. And now usually the classic we have seen a lot of lucians getting yeah. picked and the answer usually is a quirky even in <laughs> icons we have seen this a lot and that's why this yeah. is pretty normal this is pretty basic and what we're seeing in the first parts of the draft yeah this is the meme that uh wild of esports posted like one day for the icons global right the two yeah. picks for adc or marksman are lucian and quirky <laughs> so pretty sure, much we're seeing yes. it once again <laughs> and i think it's yeah. just two of these marksmen are really really strong 
in mm-hmm. and of itself. Lucian individually can pretty much carry the whole team. Corky has a lot of utilities that she can use. And also yeah. the shred of armor, which is really, really nice when it comes down to it. Yeah. And the armor shredding, especially for the Corgi, and even even though this is one thing that I'm really surprised at, is that they're still going for this picks, even though that the Hallbreaker has been nerfed a bit for ranged champions in Wild Jeff Patch 3.3. So I'm surprised that they still have this. I hope that they have something in their bag that could change this up on what's going to happen. But what I like is that this Singe pick. I really love whenever they pick a Singe, just because of the fact that this Singe could go to the top lane, could go to the mid lane, and offers a lot of utility for the team. Yeah, and Cinch could pretty much just survive on his own. He could just run around, like, mm-hmm. slow down enemy teams and also dealing so much uh, DPS damage throughout the Definitely, poison. Yeah. So, really, really nice pick there coming in from Roy Ladies. And so far, they're going in for more of a tanky composition with Jen and Singe in the same draft in the first three picks. They're still not showing who's going to be the support, who's going to be the jungle. So that's the question yeah. that needs to be answered here. Right, and Grinds Garys now bats away Nami, and Roy Ladies Ooh. bats away Garen. Surprisingly, we do have a Garen ban, which is usually the classic, because Garen is still a strong champion as he is. Because Garen really offers a lot, even though that he doesn't have a lot of CC. The distraction that he gives for the team itself is still really big. Couple that with a Rakan and an Olaf on your team, they'll be running down the backline for sure. That's why they wanted that safety for themselves. Yeah, and in addition to that, Roy Ladies already has a Baron laner. Shen would pretty much not go into support role or top lane. So banning away Gar- uh, the Garen gives them a huge advantage into that mm-hmm. aspect. And with that, Grind Sky Ares picks up Jax for themselves, potentially going into the Ooh. Baron lane instead. Yeah, what I like about the new Jax is that it's easier to stack up the... The stacks, yes. <laughs> but still, yeah. Jax is still pretty strong in the Baron lane. Even though it takes a long time for Jax to be strong, most of the Bruisers that fight against Jax wouldn't have an easy time. Because remember, he has the Counter-Strike. Even though that he's not strong in the early game, as long as he has the Counter-Strike, it would be super hard to take him down. Yeah, and I'm glad that you mentioned about the Counter-Strike because the opposing team, when it comes to top mm-hmm. lane, is Fiora. now the question. Because you have Ooh. Fiora, you have this Shen, you have Set. This That's pretty much lot. is a very flexible pick <laughs> for Roy Ladies. Yeah, there's no backline. This is. That's one thing. You only have Lucian in the backline. Everybody's gonna go in, and Lucian will be left in the backline by himself. So I'm scared about how this is gonna go. Honestly, I'm scared of how this is gonna go for the Lucian. Whoever is gonna be lo- using that Lucian, because the backline would be free access for the side of Grind Sky. But still. Grind Sky is playing it safe. They do have a lot of mixed AD and AP damage. And what I'm scared of is that would this be enough to take them down? Because most of the time when we see a Jax, you go for the Blade of the Ruin King route. And with this, with this lineup that they have in Roy Ladies, they, he can go Divine Sunder too, which is really great. No way. It's a Singe mid lane dash. This oh, is that's new. great. That's so great. We'll see how this will turn out. But the question mm-hmm. is, it's a melee versus a range matchup. So, Ariana or AA could pretty much have an easy time matching up against yeah. Singe in the mid lane. So, laning yeah. phase would definitely be to the side of Grind Sky when it comes to that uh, specific matchup. Yeah, I hope they would be ready though. I like the Singe mid lane. Honestly, I've seen this a lot in Icons, and whenever there's a Singe mid lane, they usually couple that with a Lucian or the Corky mid lane just for them to have at least an easy matchup in the mid lane. But what's great about the Singe mid lane is the amount of pressure that the Singe gets. Remember, 3.3, Singe has been nerfed a bit, minus 7 seconds to the Insanity Potion, which is why right now I hope Zanisha, I hope she has a plan in mind with the Singe. Because against an Oriana, it's good. Because honestly, Oriana doesn't have damage in the early game. So Singe would just be raining in the mid lane for sure. So we'll see. As we're already there, already done with the picks, already locked in on the draft and dash. This is the semifinals Ooh. already. It's the defending champions up against yeah. Roy Ladies, the one who defeated Talon Esports. Yeah, I hope that they would be. I hope that they would be ready for this because I am excited. I'm excited. With this matchup that we do have right now, Infinity, with their champions that is laid down in front of us, I hope that they have something in mind that could be potentially be great. Remember, we have a Shen. The only damage potential that we could have for Royal Ladies is uh, Cotton Candy and her Lucian. 
I hope that this illusion would be popping off in the late game because if they don't, they wouldn't have enough damage in the late game. That is usually what is needed here for this lineup. Grind Sky has a lot. They have a lot of damage. They have only CC from Gia. So I hope this would be enough for them to make sure of. Early game, I'm really banking on the fact that the Olaf would be able to do a lot of things. But on the other side, the side of Roy Ladies, they have a lot of champions to make sure the early game is great. But okay, looking at this, Infinity, they are already on to the red buff of Angelila. So this would yeah. not be great for her because she needs to back away from this. Olaf in the early game is being bullied. So this is not going to be a good start for her. Yeah. But here you go, Oriana, spin down. Uh-huh, yeah, going in, in, no, she needs to flash away, no more, no barrier, and that's gonna be a kill already onto the top side. Four people are here, Royal Ladies with this unorthodox setup was able to get a 2-0 against Grind Sky. What an amazing play from Royal Ladies. They were invading onto the red buff, delayed Angela Lai's farm, and it was a level gap till then, because now Fiora's level 2, Sinch was level 2 into the bot lane, well, it doesn't really matter, but Regardless, the rest of the members from Roy Ladies that went yeah. in for the jungle invade got a huge lead up against uh, exactly. Hellgirl, up against Angelaya Lila, and AA, which was pinned down in their own jungle. So massive, massive disadvantage right now for Grand Sky Aries. Yeah, I hope that they would. Oh, this is great. What I'm seeing right now for this team is that look at them. Singe and Seth onto the bot lane just because they know that they wouldn't really have a lot of damage with Yugen in the bot lane. She doesn't really have a lot yet. You remember, it's a quirky we're talking about. So we don't have a lot of damage there yet. So the Singe and the Seth would just be sustaining the bot lane. And Lucian Oriana, more of a classic matchup. Lucian has the advantage, and getting that early kill for the Lucian was really crucial. But now they're going for a fight. Really Zanisha now low in HP, flashes away, but Ignite is still ticking, so Yugen is just there. She will freely take the skill. Yin is gonna be the next down. No haymaker for you, and Angelila gets a two back for the team. Amazing response from Grind Sky Aries. Yes, get two kills from the first minute of the game, but we're gonna mm -hmm. take it back. And now Grind Sky Aries, 1.2k gold up than Ooh. Royal Ladies. And this is yeah. what you're looking for from a disadvantage. They brought it back here in two minutes yeah. into the matchup. Really aggressive, really aggressive for the team. I wasn't expecting them to go for it, but they actually did. Because they know they didn't have any ranged damage onto the bot lane. They, they are confident that they won't be killed. That's why they just went in there. But Gia right now in the mid lane she's gonna go in grand entrance right there but not enough to actually take any kills for their side because aa doesn't have any mana yeah and in addition to that that's a cinch we talked about Devin. his defensive <laughs> prowess when it comes no. to the early game it, when it comes to the mid game and even the late game especially with the giants belt as well so that's an yeah. extra 1k hp on herself so yeah. it's so much harder to just burst her down and as you stated aa didn't have any mana then so it's not a good option for them so clever move from grind sky aries to back away yeah pretty safe place from both of our teams just yet because a while ago Roy ladies did have they had a really great start for, for themselves but now with what this is really not big advantage just yet angelila oh no has been taken off again this is really unfortunate that 9605 has been pretty aggressive with the way she jungles because right now Angelila can't even get to her own jungle. 9605 is a player that we highlighted a while ago. Pre-draft, yeah. pre-game. She's super strong and she's super dominant when it comes to the jungle. And I think this yeah. is what Roy Ladies is depending on when it comes to the game. You have Definitely. a huge dominant jungle, so we could pick up Singe, mid lane, and Shen to have more of that capacity to give in onto 9605 and Cotton Candy to carry the whole game. Yeah, I just like the fact that Infinity, we have been seeing these teams have been pretty great about the rotations but what i'm really curious about is what they're gonna do after the five minute mark because everything changed for this because the dragon has been remember the dragon has been changed because we're now in elemental rift there's a lot of changes that has been said during the patch notes so everybody would be adapting to what's gonna happen here would they prioritize the drake or would they prioritize the rift herald i think before yes if this is an ocean drake big priority for that but with the changes to the ocean drake I'm not sure if it's the best deck that you should get for the first rotation. Yeah, so that's the, that was a common question since yesterday, right? Mm -hmm. Is the team going in for the Dragon first, or are they going for the Rift Herald? But before then, yeah. Angelila spotted two members of Roy Ladies Ooh, and bought side. Still Reverend. want to go. Yeah, still want to go for this fight though. 9605. 
really very aggressive onto the bot side of the map. They want to take down AA before everything starts. Remember, they still have a lot of flashes on their side. A lot... Actually, all of their summoner spells are still up, so this is going to be... They're going to be ready for this fight. Grind Sky Eris, they even have the package for themselves, so they could just put this down, put the red carpet in, and if Yugen does that, she's in position to do just that. Remember, Yin is in here, and that's going to be the exhaust onto the side. The package is not enough to actually get them to kill. The Shockwave was perfect, and they're now going to be taking it for their side. It's going to be good for the side of Grind Sky Eris, because they are taking them down. They still have a lot of members in. They still have the exhaust on Golden Candy. They're trying to get the kill, and that's gonna be it. Exhaust, not enough. That. Flashing in. You get so aggressive. That might be the punishment for her. But right now, it's a 2 for 2 and Grind Sky Ares took the ocean break. Yeah, they were on top of that. Grind Sky Ares got the ocean break. It was a 2 for 2 But in the end, oh. Yugen! <laughs> yeah, that happened. That just happened. <laughs> that just happened, Infinity. Great kill for you again. Now, make that the 3 for 2 from the 2 for 2 a while ago. Yeah. Gold medals for you, Dash. This Definitely. is their prowess when it comes to the Rift. They went in as a united front, and Grind mm -hmm. Sky Ares just punished Royal Ladies. And now, the Rift yeah. Herald, if it goes to Grind Sky Ares, this could exponentially increase their amount of gold. Uh -huh. If ever they get this, remember they got a, a, a lot of amounts of kills a while ago. Like 2k gold lead for their side. They need to not give this rep herald for the side of Roy Ladies. Because if they take this, remember, they still have playthings on their side. Uh, actually, it has been taken out already. But now, they can still go in. And Jelila goes into the back line. We still have the Ragnarok onto their side. We'll still be able to get the rep herald. One take down for their side. A one for one, two junglers have been taken down. But still, there's going to be the rep herald to the side of Roy Ladies. Yeah, and at the very least, Roy Lady's got that objective, but in the same manner, Grind Sky Ares is already pushing on top lane. So, who's gonna get the tower for his blood? Oh, would they be able to actually take it though? This, the timing here is great for Roy Ladies. Yeah, they got the first third for their side. That's gonna be great, but still, at least they had the trade here. Mid lane has been taken down for Roy Ladies. Remember, Gia to be pushed back, does have the dash out, and not gonna be able to take the kill, but. Rethral was able to still take one more bomb onto the mid lane. Yeah, however, it is amazing how Grind Sky did that. Roy Ladies got a Rift Herald, sure, yeah. but Hell Girl was split pushing bot lane, and you have Yugen and Angela Lila pushing on top side. So it was just you know, two turrets being taken by Grind Sky Ares, only traded for a Rift Herald and also a turret. So what Grind Sky Ares is doing is not giving that option for Roy Ladies to have yeah. that front of getting the advantage back. And that is yeah. the reason why we're seeing the gold difference of a 2k gold lead for GS. Yeah, and remember, what's great about Roy Ladies is that they know when to fight. Because remember, this scene composition wants to go for long drag on fights. So can goes in, Grand Enters won't be able to hit. Still, as I'm saying a while ago, uh, Infinity, Roy Ladies does have an advantage on long drag on fights. Because remember, they have a lot of champions who can make use of uh, their... Tank ability? Tank ability? Yeah, yeah, they're, they are yeah. very chunky, so that's gonna be great. But still, it's a big challenge for Ares. They need to get to the late game. Yeah, although I'm, I'm gonna bring back to one of your points just a oh. while back, that Roy Ladies oh. doesn't really have that much damage. Dealers, Damn but Grind Sky, yeah. they have Jax, they have yeah. Olaf, they have Ariana, they have Corky, and even Gia is building onto a Rod of Ages. So when it comes oh, to the late game, really? yeah. when it comes to that point, <laughs> they have so much damage potential up against Roy Ladies, which I don't know if Roy Ladies could stand in on their yeah. tank ability, as you stated just a while back. I think the big deadline here for Roy Ladies is for them to win the second objective fight. Because if they don't win the second objective fight in Wadey, who have the second or first or second items already, that is supposed to be the time that they shine. Because it's the, t the tankiness of these champions would just be at that point. After that, Grand Sky Ares would have enough damage for them. Remember, Hell Girl is using a Jack, so this is going to be a hard fight for them. Look at that top lane, though. Doesn't have anything for her side. Hell Girl at least would be able to survive. The Package. barrier has been popped. Package is here from Yugen, but will she be going for the fight, though? Okay, good thing she won't. Clever move. I don't think she's going to survive that, <clears throat> especially up against a 3v1 setup coming right. from Roy Ladies. So that is at the very least possible way that um, Hell Girl did not die. And I like how you brought up a while ago that tank ability will not be tank ability when you have so much. <laughs> Can we take that off? I don't. <laughs> the tank ability word. Can... <laughs> I mean, we're, we're bringing in new words. 
Okay, okay. But hey, Pack we're gonna have a fight already in the mid lane. Quickness has been popped. Yin uses the ultimate to pull back Gia to safety. But look at this, the back line. AA has been taken down. The fight is not going to the favor of Grind Sky Airs. They've been losing this. 20 seconds at the clock for the Infernal Jinx. If Gia falls, this is gonna be good for Roy Ladies. Grind Sky, they're losing their composure. This is not a good fight that they should have taken because they're under the turret a while ago. And this is the Infernal Drake. Roy Lady takes this. There's so oh, much damage no. up. And now Angelila pins. Oh, yeah. She's dead. She's dead. So that's an easy Drake. Also, an easy Rift Pearl for the side of Roy Ladies. Absolutely. It's the jungler out and about for 20 seconds for GS. And Roy Ladies, they have Lucian to be able to clear out these objectives very easily. And now the Infernal Drake is down. Rift Herald will be that next target after they reset. Yeah. That is off timing for Grind Sky Ares to be diving onto the second turret. They were between the first and second turrets. That's why they weren't able to stay as long as they can. can. And they weren't able to take any kill anyway. Which is why it's really unfortunate for them to be taking those fights, to be taking those risks. Because they had the advantage anyway before even that fight happened. Yeah, I like how Grind Sky Ares did that. They know they had the time to be able to take the Rift Herald because mm -hmm. Roy Ladies was from the base. Shen yeah. didn't have his ultimate up, so they have that option and they have that space that was a ticking time bomb. They have right. to get that Rift Herald very, very quickly because if they don't, it's going to be Roy Ladies having that potential to go for the contest and easily taking it, especially with GS not having that jungle. So, yeah. really, really good stuff here for Grind Sky being able to take that one for one objective trade. Yeah, great win. Great win for uh, Roy Ladies with Grind Sky. Goes in for the consolation prize of taking the Rift Herald. But they still haven't taken down the mid lane turret of Roy Ladies, which is pretty important because as long as you don't take down the mid lane turret, you won't be able to open up a lot of opportunities for yourselves because the mid lane does give a lot of vision and it's the center point of everything. So that's why they need to take this down. That's a big challenge for them before the next objective comes in. Yeah, it, it, it's similar to, I guess, a chessboard, right? If you have a queen right. in the middle mm -hmm. of the chessboard, you can't really yeah. just pierce through onto that uh, front lines because you have yeah. so much defensive capabilities on yeah. that chessboard. So that is what Grind Sky Ares needs to take off. But Hellgirl, not gonna be okay, taken yeah. off that easy because it's a okay. it's a jax. Yeah, it's a jax. It's a jax. <laughs> it's not gonna be easy to take down Jax for sure. Even though that she went in for the strike first blade of the Rune King route, she's pretty strong right now. One v one with the Shen, she's gonna be taking her down for sure. Because right now it's a big You're advantage collapsing. for Grind Sky Ares. Look at this. Yin gonna be the target. Good thing he, she was able to flash away from that, and that's gonna be safety for them. Package is up and ready for the side of Grind Sky. And as I said, they needed to take that down. They were able. To. Tower down, tower down. A very, very good objective takedown from Grind Sky Ares. Ooh, you can playing it pretty. Yugen is really confident on what she can do with this Corky. Every time that I see Yugen playing the Corky, she goes in, she goes forward, and she's not even afraid of getting dived in by a lot of people. Because remember, she does have the package too. That's that's where the confidence is coming from. Yeah, and uh, I believe the power of Grind Sky Ares really relies on the trust. Because these people are close friends in real life. They're together for a couple of uh, months or even years now when it comes to playing in the red. So really, really strong when it comes to, you know, the chemistry between each player. And I think that's also one of the reasons why Yugen is comfortable in being that confident and being aggressive up against Royal Ladies. Yeah. Look at this. Took down turrets already for the side tree for three for on the turrets, or rather three for two, because bot lane hasn't been taken down by Roy Ladies just yet. So what's great about this is that Grind Sky Eris just needs to make sure that this would not be taken by the side of Roy Ladies. Roy Ladies, they can go and go for the mission and try to take down the bot lane turret, but it's because that Helger is really strong right now, it's gonna be hard for them to make this Shen wouldn't be having an easy time fighting against Helger right now. Yeah, especially with the BRK. Because BRK, yeah. remember, each normal hit is an HP percent damage. So that's really, really strong for Jax to be able to just peel down or, well, just shred down the HP bars of Shen. Yeah. <sighs> it's not going to be easy for Shen for sure. Cause that's why right now it's... 
how are they gonna start this? Because the Mountain Drake is gonna be up in just a bit. And that's what we're waiting for. The next objective to come out. After the objective comes out, this is when the big fight happens. And as we said a while ago, Roy Ladies doesn't, wouldn't have enough damage if Cotton Candy would be taken down here. And that's where they're going for it. That's gonna be the Grand Andrus would be able to hit. And that's gonna be the Stasis onto the side. Cotton Candy's gonna fall. No more damage for the side of Roy Ladies. This is gonna be good for Grind Sky Ares. Because right now, they just need to run away. They got the kill that they needed. They can take the Baron. They can take the Drake if ever they want to. Absolutely fantastic there. The the engage coming in from Gia, the grand entrance was phenomenal. That was a human oh. knockoff. Held real though. Yeah, fighting against two members. Enough distraction for the team. Because remember, because of that, they rotated back onto the bot side. They almost all... I thought they are going to be taking yeah. the Baron there after that. But Gia, playing with fire here. They're going to go in. They have the shot boy. Oh, was able to hit on the backline, but still... They Still got the kill. Oh no, 9605 is pretty strong right now. That's not gonna be a good fight. TP comes in, but no, not enough. This is gonna be Helger, but the slow is enough for them to stop the fight from happening. They still have their repost on the 9605. But Yugen, pretty strong right now if she goes into the Valkyrie, but no. That was supposed to be a good fight for Grind Sky Ares, but Roy Ladies, 9605 is just too strong. It was unfortunate. Jungle and support gone for GS. And now, Roy Ladies, as you say, they could take the Mountain Crate. And Infernal Dragon would also be increased when it comes to that. To oh, that no. stack. So, yeah. a lot more damage coming into Roy Ooh. Ladies. 9605, though. Look at the damage from Yugen. Really strong. Corky at this point in the game. Pretty scary. The amount of damage that she's going to give the longer the fight goes. That is going to be scary. Right now, one thing that we need to look at, Infinity, is the amount of pressure, the amount of priority that Hellgirl is giving Grind Sky Ares. Because since a while ago, you need to invest two people for you to take down Hellgirl. Because if she, if you don't check Hellgirl, she's going to be taking down all your towers. That's why every time, they always need to put someone there for safety. And I don't even think two people is enough. Because remember a while ago, Hellgirl was just pushing on the bot lane, was taking the tier yeah. 2 turret. She Yoro took the was tower. There. Shen was there. <laughs> Hellgirl yeah. survived! Yeah. So, I don't know. I don't know if it's only two people that you need to bring up to Maybe Hellgirl, with the Lucian be... would be good. Uh, but without the Lucian, it might be hard. Because with 9605 too, that could be good. If 9605 is there, that could be a 2v1. That is good. Yeah. But still, Gia... Pretty aggressive. Angelai Lila, look at that. The shockwave on the tree. Perfect timing. And the showstopper is not going to be hitting on the Angelai Lila. That stone plate and chat is enough for them to survive. And that's going to be it. 9605 might be taken down with the back line, though. This is going to be good for the side of Grind Sky. This is the fight that they needed since a while ago. Two for one. I think Grind Sky is going to be taking that win any time of the day because the bot lane is going to be taken down, too. And Yin might be a casualty onto the side. Hellgirl, this is... she's just doing so much for Grind Sky. This is crazy, Dash. This is what we're talking about a while ago. Hellgirl just gives a lot of these space for Grind Sky Ares to make moves. And if ever Roy Ladies takes the bait, Hellgirl is just going to take objectives in the bot lane. And now the bot lane is open. So when it comes to lane prio, that's natural lane pressure for Grind Sky Ares. They got six turrets down. Grind Sky Ares is just taking over the map, even though they didn't take a lot of jackets. It doesn't really matter. If they have a lot of turrets, they have a lot of pressure. Natural lane pressure, as you said. This is going to be a 3v5. They don't have anything on their side here. They've got the taunt, but that's going to be the steal! What? Yen was able to take that. That is unfortunate because they take down Angela Lila. Cotton Candy is going to be here. They still have the fight in them. They have the shield. That is going to be enough for her to survive. Never mind. That's going to be the flash for Helga, but you get is going to be the target team for their side. They got the Baron. They bought time for themselves. Roy Ladies is going to be surviving another day right here. Zunisha going to go in for AA. She's going to be chasing her down, but not enough speed right there. The Baron is a huge advantage for Roy Ladies because now they can push the mid lane. Yeah. That's big. That's big, Infinity. Because they gave that, Roy Ladies gave themselves a chance to go for a fight against the Elder Drake. They have a chance to go for pushes. Yes, we said a while ago that Grind Sky Ares didn't, that did have a lot of push, but because they took down Angelai Lila during that fight, that was so, so unfortunate. That's why they didn't have the smite during that fight. They're clinging onto the last hope. 
and that Baron Nasher gave him a lot. Oh, man, Helgrim. Helgrim, though, Helgrim, pretty strong. The lamppost right there. Oh, man, that is just too strong. Three items, right? Four items together with the Hell hull Breaker. She's going to be taking down the top turret. Remember, we said a while ago she has a lot of pressure on her. They need two people to take her down. Because if not, this Elder Dragon is going to go to the side of Grind Sky. I mean, just imagine, Dash. Like a whole yeah. lamppost, like hitting you. <laughs> Yes. Like so much times with the and imagine how of long a the lamp posts are. <laughs> That's <laughs> long, man. That's long and hard. I can I can imagine how hard it is if it's it has been bonked on your head. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're gonna be definitely you're gonna fight though. Yeah, yeah. Gonna be concussed. Showstopper, the backline, Gia gonna be the target, Shockwave won't be able to hit anyone. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be good for the side of Grind Sky Ares, because now they're gonna be taking down Roy Ladies. It's just making sure that they're kept in check. This is going good for the side of Grind Sky, or rather Roy Ladies, because right now they're being chased down. Grind Sky, they need to back away. They don't have a lot of HP. Sunisha, so with the amount of pressure that she gives, she's just running down the back line. This is gonna be good. I ain't all no rooted to the ground. And this is gonna be taken also down. Two people last standing. That Baron is gonna be the demise of Grind Sky Ares. That one play was the reason why their Nexus is being taken down and Roy Ladies, they're trying their oh, best. No. They're winning this game. Oh no, Angela Lila won't be the angel that will save the side of Grand Sky Ares because the Roy Ladies is gonna topple them down. What a play from Roy Ladies! They were consistent from the early game. They were able to punish Angela Lila's uh buff and jungle camps when it comes to late game they cling to their hopes they cling onto their power and they got to stay onto the baron that changed everything in their oh, favor man. that baron fight that was the actual ace ace in the hole right there for the side of a boy ladies they were able to take the baron yin was the superstar of that game that haymaker was the reason why they took the baron and because of that it snowballed in the favor of royal ladies crying sky areas it was going in favor of them during the whole game but because of that baron take hell girl put in a lot of pressure yes but because of that baron it was all for naught because royal ladies was just able to get enough power for them to get the push into the mid lane it's a game changer yeah definitely. Cha -ching. <laughs> <laughs> They were able Great. to take down like the that mid lane. They were able to push. Right? Yeah. It's a game changer. Yeah. Definitely. I like that. I like that. I, I like that. Because it's a very yeah. big game changer. <laughs> that Baron take for for them was pretty important. I thought that that's already in the bag. Because it's a 3v5 fight, right? The 3v5 yeah. fight there for Grind Sky Ares could have that could have been in their favor all along. But because of how tanky your boy ladies are, they were able to take down the jungler after that. It was enough. And that was something that I was afraid of during the whole time, Infinity. If they were able to yeah. take that, Grind Sky Ares would be losing on a losing battle there. And Roy Ladies, they took that and they got the win. I like this uh this thing that we're seeing right now. This place, this skills, this display of skills from both of our teams. Because it was really close until it wasn't anymore. Yeah. And you can just never be calm if 9605 is alive and you're yeah. taking an objective. Yeah. Right, we keep on talking about even before the game, even before the series, even before the draft has started, or the yep. game or the broadcast has started. That 9 to 6 05, the jungle of Roy Ladies is just an absolute insane player. Yeah, definitely. She was the reason why she during the start. The start was also important to point out. The start that they were able to disrupt the jungling of Angela Lila was the reason why Angela Lila didn't get the early game pressure that she was supposed to have as an Olaf. And we all know how Olaf is in the mid to early to late game. That is the reason why they had the hard time. So next time for Grind Sky Ares, I think they need to look at that because the members of Roy Ladies might be able to do that onto the next game. But before we head into the ne that next game, everyone, we're just going to be taking a short break. We have been your casters for today. I'm Dash and I was here with Infinity. See you guys in just a bit. Welcome back, everybody, to the FSL Wadriff Open Tree. And now we're going to be going on to the game two of our games between Grind Sky Aries versus Roy Ladies. We're going to be your shoutcasters for today. I'm Dash and I'm here with Infinity. Yeah, that game one was accelerating all throughout from the first minute of that yeah. game to the five minutes into the matchup, into the 15 minutes, up until the end of that game. It was all about excitement. There was no uh, stale moment. 
because yeah. everyone was just participating everyone was looking for these gangs and looking for these plays definitely definitely that game was so close until it wasn't anymore that baron that last baron fight was the reason why it all tipped in favor of roy ladies but still they were both strong teams honestly the strats that they have they have but during the whole time was really great and i like the rotation from both of our teams because they know if they won't be able to take the fights here if they won't be able to take the fights here just take the fights anywhere or at least take an objective somewhere along the map and that's what hell girl was doing all the time during that game for grind sky areas but now they need to think about what they have to do next because right now it's a best of three remember if they lose this grind sky areas would be taken off the competition yeah and they're the defending champion and roy is here roy ladies is here to contest them so there's a, a huge stake on the line for both these teams here in the semifinals. And I've saw I, I've seen some of the comments from the, the live stream just a while ago. And some people were asking, like, which regions, which teams are fighting? So Grand Sky Aries is coming in from the Philippine region. And Vietnam region is for Royal Ladies. So that's the difference between these two teams. Um, and just a quick trivia that Grand Sky Aries, once again, is the gold medalist. Of yeah. sea games this year yeah and they have always been strong whenever fsl is going to come in and that's why they there's a lot of expectations for this team for the side of grind sky areas because they have been performing pretty well since the start of fsl and now they are really needing to keep their crown for themselves here in fsl wild rift open 3 but now in the meta we have seen a while ago infinity the bands are still the classic what we've seen in icons still are getting played a lot but hallbreaker isn't as much as the first item a uh, pick for a lot of champions here compared to how it was before. But now Karma is open, so that's going to be taken. Yeah, it's an instant pick. And it's one of the most evergreen champions, even in um, Icons Global. Right. And Karma Perfectly. was consistently up there when it comes to the support pool or even the mid, mid lane pool because it was used in the mid lane before. So even then right now, Grand Sky Ares is having a very flexible first pick. And for Royal Ladies, on the other hand, they have Corky and Shen. So they're bringing yeah. in the Corky right now for their draft. Still the safety. The safety of the draft from Royal Ladies. They still wanted to go for the same thing. They have the Shen. And if ever this is the same thing, if they have the Twisted Fate here, that would be good for Royal Ladies. Yes, they have the same composition in where they have a lot of CC. But the problem is the damage. But it's a good thing they had the Corky for their side. Because that's enough damage already. Yeah, and this game too is more about denial rather than picking up something from themselves. Because if you look at the draft right now, you have Grind Sky Aries picking up the Karma, and then the Lee Sin. And remember 1996x2005 from the prior series has so much strength when it comes to a Lee Sin pick. Yeah. And when you're looking at the draft on the side Ooh. of Royal Ladies, they banned away Lucian to then go for Corky. So there I, are a lot of these denials from both these teams. Yeah, I like what I'm seeing here from the bands. They banned the Varus because they knew the potential of a Karma and Varus in the bot lane on the hands of Yugen and Jia. And that is a scary matchup to have for their side. That's why they banned a lot of this early game bot lane champions. Because if they don't, they would have a hard time fighting against them. Because the Corky doesn't really have a lot of damage in the early game. So they want that safety for themselves. Karma? Paired with anyone who has a great early game in the bot lane, it's just a menace to deal with in the bot side. So that's why yeah. on the side of Grind Sky, they're just banning a lot of those champions that could be hard to deal with. The set is banned. I'm kind of expecting a lot of those CC champions to get banned also. Because they have the jungle, the top lane anyway. So right now, ooh, Alistar is going to oh. get banned for the side. Oh, you missed it. Interesting. Oh, no support. No support bans. <laughs> right. No 50. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. I mean, that's all right. That's all right. But what do you think about this? The Twisted Fate to the Shen early game? What do you think huh. about it, Infinity? Oh, never mind. It's it's an interesting thing if ever they commit onto the Twisted Fate because they have Shen. So if they have Shen and Twisted Fate, you have a lot of these global response ultimates Ooh, that you can go into team fight. So Shen could split push, Twisted Is Fate Karma? could just shove the lanes to then go into a certain team fight. So really, really strong when it comes to that. But they then went for the Morgana. So a really strong team fighting champion as well to maybe go for support or still an option to go into mid lane. For Grind Sky Aries, however, they are hovering onto the Ezreal 
mm -hmm. which is really strong when it comes to mobility. And also with a Karma, that's extra movement speed. But they just hover okay. it to again go to the Dayana, wherein they want to go for team fights instead. They want to yeah. match it up up against Roy Ladies. I was kind of expecting this last specs for Grian Sky would be Zed. If this was Ray Ray, the Zed would come out for sure. Because the Corky, if they picked the Morgana onto the second rotation, that would just mean that they wanted the Morgana Alistar in the Baltane and Corky would be in the mid lane. Uh, that's what I'm expecting here for the side of Roy Ladies. Because if this was a Zed versus Corky in the mid lane, this would be an easy lane for Grand Sky. Yeah. But now, because of this, Diana would have a bit of a hard time because of that early game low range or rather melee range for AA but she would be able to sustain a delay which is great but would not be able to pressure a Corky to decelerate the late game power spike of the Corky. Yeah you forgot about the signature champion of Ray Ray. Yeah. Jace forgot about Definitely that right specific. right. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. but now we have a different sort of uh, draft here compared into game number one. Now mm -hmm. I think Grind Sky Ares wants to go for more of a bit of the uh, team fighting potential with the Camille or uh, with the Karma. They still have a lot of these early aggression coming in from the Lee Sin. So really, really strong when it comes to the whole duration of the game. They have specific champions that yeah. excels on those faces. And for the side of Royal Ladies, they locked in onto the Alistar. They locked in onto Morgana, mm. the Corky, the Shen. So expectedly, they are actually matching up the pacing that Grind Sky Ares wants. Okay, what they wanted to go for here is that I was expecting Grind Sky to go for a more of a pick composition because they picked the Lee Sin and the Camille anyway on the first round. Then they went in for the Diana on the late game just for them to have a bit of disruption if ever Roy Ladies would go in. Because remember, they have a lot of champions that could go in. It's the same thing. As what they did during the last game. They have damage in the jungle. They have damage on one lane, which is the Morgana, uh, rather the Corgi, and also the Kha'Zix. So they only have a backline. The backline that they have is only the Corgi and the Morgana, which is almost the same formula as game one. This game two, Grind Sky Ares change it up. They wanted the damage. They wanted the early game advantage just for them to snowball and not let the Roy Ladies take over the late game. The question is if they could. Because a while ago from game so. number one, we're yeah. seeing like a lot of these advantages from Grind Sky Ares. They opened up the bottom lane already, got the inhibitor turret, so they got the natural lane pressure in their favor. But in the end, just the one mistake, just one thing that went for Roy Ladies, the Baron Nasher, that gave them the huge advantage to win the game. So really it's the big question. Can they do it? I hope so. I hope that they would be able to do it because a while ago it was pretty hard for them to translate that advantage in their favor for the late game. They had a hard time making use of that in their favor and that's why right now they have been punished but still looking pretty great in the early game because it's the same thing. Both of our junglers yeah. on the other side, I'm not going to be expecting a lot of ganks early on. Maybe at the 2 minute 30 second mark, that is when the first gank is going to happen unless Unless, like what are we seeing in the top lane, Hellgirl might meet 9605 here. Yeah, uh, although I don't think it's going to be a kill for any of these players as of yet, there isn't really a CC that could lock anyone. Maybe aside from Shen with a taunt, but it isn't really going to be enough, especially with the um, cables coming in from a Camille and also a flash available with a barrier. So it's not going to translate into any kills so far. And as of yet, what I've seen from the pattern of the past series that we have for FSL, especially with the new patch, is that there isn't really that huge uh, ganks that's happening in the early game. There are a couple, yeah. but not really that frequent. So everyone's Ooh. playing for the objective, building up their items, building up their damage power spikes to be able to match up the pacing when it comes to the first objective. Yeah, and what I like about this is that they didn't have Vision on this side of the map. That's why Grind Sky Ares would also be taking this blue buff. But Roy Ladies, pretty easy for 9605, not even a contest from the side of Grind Sky. But they're going to be taking the blue, blue buff up the other side. And this is looking good for Roy Ladies. This start for a Kha'Zix and also a Lee Sin. They're not taking any kills. This is a very classic uh, Lee Sin Kha'Zix matchup, right? But whoever gets the first kill, gets the advantage for the whole team all over because both of them are snowball champions yeah definitely i mean if you get a kill you get gold if you get more gold you get the advantage so pretty much just a general formula to follow through mm -hmm. getting the first blood is really really important and something interesting that we haven't tackled as of yet um discussing the series so far is the 
lesser defense of the bottom turrets. So it's much more easier to break down. And I think that's also one of the reasons why, like, we see, like, a lot of these players uh, focusing just a while ago. Like, Lee Sin uh, mm -hmm. focusing on bottom side of the map. Yeah. Look at this bottom side. Killed it. With the new patch, though. I think bot lane is always going to be a priority. Dragon lane towers have been uh, nerfed a bit when it comes to the resistances. That's why if ever yeah. you try to take one down or at least take both of them down into the bottom lane, that it's a surefire first blood turret for your side. That's why right now most of our teams are prioritizing the bot lane because if they get the kill there, if they are lucky enough to get a double kill in the bot lane, that would be enough for them to get the advantage getting priority yeah. for the team. It will be an easy clear, especially with an Ezreal, because it's yeah. increased damage with the second skill, with the W, I believe, uh, with yeah. your basic attack. So it really does help quite a bit. So we'll see how that would turn out, because as of yet, no one's getting that double kill in the bottom lane, so we're not seeing that aggression coming through in that tower first blood. But Kha'Zix, though, gonna meet up Helga. Okay, all good. Went in for the vision, but the taunt flash coming for their side. They didn't even need to wait for anything. The flash wasn't enough for them to survive, and Helger falls, gets them a first blood for the side of Roy Ladies. That's a different story because a while ago we were talking Ooh. about champions that don't have ulti. Now they do. Okay, Decent. Look at that. The ultimate come in, cotton candy. Oh, was kicked back, and Yin gonna be the next target for the team here. Still have the unstoppable, but. In the, this is for them to get the kill anyway. It's still oh. a trade for their side. And not to get the kill though. I thought that through shot for Raj was enough. I thought so too. But I guess we're wrong. Not enough damage. That's an Alistar we're talking about. So maybe just a little bit more defensive when it comes to support pool. But that was really, really close. That was 1 HP. Regardless. Looks like Grand Sky Ares wants to just clear down the turret in the bottom lane. Especially with 200 HP remaining. This was... I was expecting something different here for their side. They got one kill already. But because Angelai Lila is already here, they might be able to take down this pretty fast. Because remember, they have the package on their side. That's gonna be it. That knockback was enough for them to, just, to say yeah. that this is our drink. Yeah, Alistar is just... Nope! <laughs> no enter. Uh, heated <laughs> out. He got heated out. And right now, Infinity, with this, with the start of the... Roy ladies with how they started with the game a while ago. It was pretty interesting that they got the Drake by themselves as fast as they could because a while ago we've seen them take down the turret pretty fast, right? I mean, they they took down the kill onto the bottom side. I was expecting Grind Sky to have the priority there at that part of the map, but because they weren't, because they resetted, Roy ladies found that chance and they got the Drake for themselves. Yeah, similar to what we've seen a while ago. I think Roy ladies just uh, pick their poison and use the same poison that Grind Sky Ares did a while ago. Because yeah. remember, in game number one, like Grind Sky Ares, after Royal Ladies took the, the Drake, they reset. And Grind Sky Ares took the Rift Herald. So now they're doing the same thing that they did just a while back. So, oh. similar form of oh, fight, though. Great knockback, great knock up to the ultimate right there. The Moonfall was enough to get four, but not enough for them to get any kills for their side. Gia, look at that. The ultimate wasn't enough for them to get any kills even with that. And Grind Sky, you need to back away from this. This is not oh, enough. 9605 survived with one HP. Whoa. Got the kill, but at least Grind Sky Ares got that ripple for the side. How does Royal Ladies keep on dodging that depth? <laughs> like they're 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 immune to death. Yeah. Like the true shot barrage almost got Yin and now it almost got 1996 X2005. But it didn't. They were remaining with one HP. So right now that's just so much miracles coming through for Royal Ladies. And so far, it is Grind Sky who has the 1k go lead. But remember, it is Royal Ladies who has the infernal break. Yeah, they have the Infernal Drake, remember, as long as they stack these Drakes on top of each other, that just gives them more and more of his bonuses. And in the Kha'Zix, on the Corki, that is not what you want to happen. If they get a lot of damage on their hands, Royal Ladies would just be taking down the back line like butter. And Grind Sky Ares, 
They need to stop that from happening. They need to keep decelerating Boy Ladies to get into the late game. Yugen and Gia are pretty strong forces here. But look at the top side. Look at the fight in the bottom lane. The transcendent embrace in the mid lane was enough to shut them down. But not enough for them to get the kill. Yugen takes down 9605. No shutdowns whatsoever. But 2 4 1 in favor of Grand Sky. Amazing, amazing stuff from Grand Sky Ares. And I like how you mentioned about the, the players split pushing from each and every single side of the map. It was Lee Sin and Hellgirl, uh, well, rather AA, pushing on top side. And it was Yugen and Geo was just pushing on mid lane. So that was just putting Royal Ladies Took on a position down, that they need to split <laughs> up. And now, two thirds more down to the side of Roy Ladies that brings up Grind Sky Ares to a 3k gold lead. That was just surprising that Yen just got taken down from long range by Yugen in the mid lane. I was surprised that they got the takedown there, but still, it's still a great effort for Roy Ladies to be surviving right now. This is the onslaught of Grind Sky Ares. They want revenge from what happened during game one, and they're not stopping at any stops right here against Roy Ladies. So Grind Sky Ares, they are taking over the map. Look at how clean they're doing this. They got three towers already. Absolutely. So now the question is, like, what will be the next step? Because the Royal Ladies is now on a bit of a disadvantage, is on a bit of a pickle. They need to do something else, especially now Angela Lila almost getting that with fire. kick. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just the dark blinding holding her down. Yeah, she got the Sonic Wave. If... What's hard about this? If for Angelai Lila, even though we all know that Angelai Lila is such a great decent player, what's hard is that they have a Morgan. It won't be easy to pull back one person onto the backside, but Hellgirl, oh, he's playing with fire, here goes in, Hextech Ultimatum, Gargoyle, and Shant has been popped, but the Transcendent Embrace wasn't able to pull back the Shen. Still, Flash has been burnt, Ignite has been taken down, Hellgirl gets the advantage on the bot side. Yeah, and you know what, I'm, I'm looking at something brand new. Yeah. We're looking at a new item, Veil and Shant, oh, from right. uh, Gia. Yeah. Right? So, yeah, that's big, yeah. So they were like, you know what? You can have the black shield from Organa, we're gonna have the veil shield. Won't be hitting those bindings as easy as yes, back with the knockoff. I thought they're gonna follow up with something there, but no, they didn't. This black shield is just making it hard for Angela and Lila to pull someone back. Get the great dragon's rage through the safeguard. And until now they haven't been able to get that just because of the timings of cotton candy. Definitely, although the Ocean Drake is already alive. Hellgirl! Okay, goes in. Again, another hex that goes to meet them up to the bottom side of the map. Resume the strike is gonna be able to take the kill. Angela Lila might fall down here. No more smite for their side, but if they take down this Cossacks, Moonfall! Not gonna be able to hit, but the Transcendent Embrace does! And this is gonna be good for the side of Grind Sky Ares. Yes, they won't be able to take down anyone, but that's enough space for them to go and take this Ocean Drake. But no, they're gonna be they resetting don't have mana. and wait for Angela Lila to respawn. Yugen and Gia doesn't have any mana, so they could they couldn't go onto the Ocean Drake. They right. don't have the jungle. They don't have mana. So when it comes to the damage, it's not really going to be in effect. And now it's Roy Ladies taking the charge, taking the lead. They're now starting the Ocean Drake. I like that they're starting the Ocean Drake right now. This is so fine. Taking this chance again. They know that they have that they can take this pretty fast, and that's gonna be it. No steals whatsoever for Grand Sky Ares, but they're gonna go and try to take the kill against Nitro 605. There's the shield coming in for the Shen, but the backline has been taken down already. Nitro 605 runs around, but this is gonna be the Shen. It's not gonna be going anywhere because Hellgirl says Hextech Ultimate them. You're in prison here with me. The Rift Herald though will be the next target oh, coming from Grand Yuken. Sky. They're pinning that aggression. it. Oh my, the aggression from Yugen. Yugen. She got punished because of it. I thought she's gonna be able to take the kill, but that aggression was just too much to handle. Oh boy, ladies, they, caught, they take her down with it. It was just too much. I mean, the dark blinding along with the That's an uh, right shadow. There. It was just. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> They'll get their the anyway. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but now, Envy, who would just the, the start right here after taking the Rift Herald, they are gonna go for. I'm expecting that they're gonna go for a bit of more aggression. Because right now, they took down two turrets already, right? So, with this two turrets, they're just holding their ground. They're not letting them go for a five man fight on the side of Roy Ladies, because that's what Roy Ladies want. So Grind Sky Ares is just putting every person on every lane and try to defend the turrets. 
Because look at this. Definitely. Four people are in the top side. And yes, they take a tower. But what's surprising though is that they only took down tower after the 12 minute mark. And that's a long, long time. And Grand Sky Airs had priority over the map since a while ago. Yeah. And once again, Yugen being aggressive. Going oh, on to Cotton Candy. Yugen is so aggressive. Cotton Candy, they burned the ultimate to stand unit and he's down. So this is going to be a good time for Helger again to go to the bot lane. Try to push for herself. And she's just going to be giving the space again for her team. Yeah, and that was two ultimates burned by Grand Sky Ares against Roy Ladies. That was the Morgana ulti, that was the Shen ulti. So now Roy Ladies is on a bit of a disadvantage when it comes to that team fight that they were wanting to go for. As you said it a while ago, Roy Ladies wants the forces, and now Grand Sky Ares has the hand. Yeah, get the real kill, get the top side. If they take this tower down, that's five turrets down on the side of Roy Ladies already. And yeah, nobody is here. Great macro again. I hope this translates to something. The knock up onto the back side. That's gonna be good. Transcendent embrace the moonfall onto two. The black shield was enough to spot them out to help him out. 9605 goes in with the lead, but are they gonna be able to take that one kill? The Sasis is there, and that's enough for them to survive for just a bit, bit more. Oh. And Yugen takes one more down. Two people are down for the side of Roy Ladies, and they want to get more. They want to get more kills. They want to mangle Roy Ladies, but still, the push is not happening. They don't have any stand united. That was a great 4v4 for Grand Sky Yugen's poke does not miss. It's like there's magnets onto that shot. Crazy how Yugen plays this. And once again, Hellgirl spit pushing into the bottom lane, buying some space, getting some gold for her team. And now it's the inhib turrets, the only one left. Yeah. I feel that they would be able to make use of this though. Have the Baron, they have the mid lane turret. I mean, they only had their uh, inhibited turrets on the side of Roy Lady, so it would be hard to move around, especially if you want to take priority onto the Baron or onto even the Drakes. So that is what Grind Sky was looking at from the early game. Yes, we're gonna be giving this Drakes for them, but we're gonna be taking all their towers. So next time, our the Drakes are gonna be on our side. Yeah, although that's only the Mountain Drake, so really, really difficult moment for. Grind Sky Ooh, Aries. Side. Yeah, AA. They're going for the fight. Onto her own devices, but the stasis was enough to buy some time for them to get it. Transcendent Embrace! Oh, I thought they were going to be able to take the kill there, but it's a good thing she has the Gargoyle and Shan. Roy Ladies survives for another day, like every time. Yeah, and Hell Girl consistently, like aside from the fight, once again, split push, split push, yeah. split push, split push. That's the name of the game for Hellgirl. She's really just pressuring royal ladies to split up. Because if one member is missing, pretty much they're gonna lose one of their frontliners and Alistair oh. will be the only one left. You can stab and she's just so much to deal with. Remember, she had the Triforce backline. Look at that, the Hextic Ultimatum. Hell girl went in for it. But no, they're not going to be continuing. They're just using their ultimates. They're just making sure that Royal Ladies would be kept in check. And look at this. Look at this. The, the way that the wave is managed in favor of Grind Sky Eris, they have priority in the mid lane. So this Mountain Drake would be an easy take for them. Because if they don't defend this mid lane turret, it would be taken down by the minions. Absolutely. And yeah. if they don't take the Drake, if Roy Ladies take it down, Ooh. they're going to have three. Ex three exceptionally stacks. more damage. <laughs> yeah, three yeah. stacks for an Infernal Drake. Yeah, imagine the amount of sustain and also the amount of damage that they would be dealing after that. So they need to be careful here. Grind Sky needs to think about how they approach this fight because the package is already up for Zanisha. So if she goes in, it would be hard. 9 to 605 is going to be the target here for Yugen. Yugen is just whittling down the members here of uh, Roy Ladies, but I think they have been left off. The Rift Scuttler has been taken off already. So this is going good for Roy Ladies. They're just waiting for the chance here. And Yugen is just pulling back the Drake just for them to have more time. That's... Oh man, the, the amount of micro plays that Grind Sky Ares and Roy Ladies are doing, they're not... They're keeping each other in check. Yeah, and if you you see what the uh, Hell Girl is doing, she's pushing on mid lane so that Roy Ladies will t change their... Yeah. Priority into the mid lane. Yeah. Because if they commit onto the dragon, it's going to push onto the inhibitor. Oh, it's going to get open, and they will have prior for GS. <laughs> yeah, they're this 
this is nerve wracking. This is like a battle of wills. Whoever is gonna stop from taking priority from every lane, that that team is gonna be on a disadvantage. Look at this, Hellgirl. They are see Roy ladies is seeing Hellgirl on the top side, but what they know also is that she has teleport, so it won't be a problem. So what they need is get the one dark binding. That timing, that three second timer for the teleport would be enough to take down one member. So it's important for Cotton Candy to hit one dark binding, and that would be the win right there with the Dragon's Rage. Great timing for their side. Flashes have been burned for the side of Royal Ladies. Look at the back line, though. This is going to be good for their side. But look at Angela and Lila. She's low on HP. Hexing ultimate on the back side. Both of their tanks are going to fall down. And Shen is also going to fall. They don't have the jungler. Angela and Lila is super low. 9605 is pretty healthy. But Yugen is still the bastion of Grind Sky. And that's the reason why Royal Ladies isn't still taking this bounty break. Angela and Lila is very low, though. So if they that's go mid, bad. it's going to be difficult. It's not gonna be a good fight. 9605 low in HP. That's a good timing for the dark finding for this side. Trusha Barrage! Whoa. Not gonna be able to get the kill anyway, but still, Zunisha's gonna fall. Great advantage, and now this mountain drink is on the pockets for sure of Grind Sky Ares, but they're still chasing. Look at Yugen. She doesn't have any mana, but she's still going, and Cotton Denny's gonna fall, and this just signals that they can take the Baron if they want. Look at the dead timer. That's 30 seconds. I'm losing my mind! I don't know what's happening. Because it's just <laughs> each and every single time. That fight took oh, so man. long. But if you imagine, if you look how I Grind Sky Aries played, the TP immediately from Hell Girl a while ago with Angelila getting the kick, it was the team separated by Roy Lady. So Chen died. Then after that, Kazix was low because of how Grind Sky Aries was able to poke them down. But the yeah. thing that I'm really surprised about is. Two times in a row, 1996 x 2005 was able to survive this two-shot barrage. One yeah. HP <laughs> each time. Look at this. Everyone has Margo and Chen in the side of Pro Ladies. And that's it's okay. probably, not probably, that's the reason why they're all surviving a, a sliver of health. Because they all okay. all have the Gargoyle engine. And now, look at this. They're dividing the fight. Look at the priorities here of Grand Sky Ares. They're looking at bot lane. Zunisha is here. So they have enough time for Helger to rotate onto this Baron. They're taking the Baron. They have the Vision here. 20 seconds on the clock for the Elder Drake. So they are distracting the members here. They don't have Zunisha. They don't have enough damage. So if they try to take this fight, they don't have enough. So this is going to be good for their side. Stand United has been popped on the 9605. But they're going to go in. They have the package and they stop that at that timer that's good for grind sky Ares because if they committed that could have been a steal for Roy ladies yeah absolutely and also if they committed to the fight you also have morgana with the ultimate you still have a uh, kazix with the ultimate all these ultimates could deal so much damage and could cc when it comes to a team fight so they elder opted drake. to back away to then go for the elder drake oh, yes. I think they still have the package on Zunisha. They need to whittle that down, but Cotton Candy has been whittled down. Moonfall is going to be cancelled. That's going to be good for Roy Ladies. They don't have a big ultimate already. The back is having a hard time to get into the back line. Hellgirl isn't going to be going in. She ate a lot of that package damage, and that's why she was just whittled down. Yugen has low HP, doesn't have a lot of mana, but enough for this fight, enough for this mission. They take down 9605 onto the Guardian Angel, and that's enough. Gargoyle enchant for them to survive and that Elder Drake, they're looking at it eyes to eyes for the side of Brian Sky Eris. It was a 1 for 2 trade. The Elder Drake is alive. Ray Ladies has to quickly respond if they don't want to give to Grind Sky Ares this huge buff. We just talked about the buff that the Elder Drake gives. It's an execute up to 15% HP, so really, really oh, massive, man. especially in the safe game. Still. Oh man, look at this. They're still playing it safe. They don't want to take any risk. No, and Remember, no. This is a Kha'Zix. That is gonna be taken pretty fast. It's just a good thing that Yugen was here. Because if Yugen wasn't here, they're just gonna be taking that without any contest from Grind Sky Eris. And the thing is, Grind Sky doesn't have any vision onto the Elder Drake. They were right. relying on the True Shot Barrage. They were relying on Scarry's Blooms. So if Roy Ladies committed, it's a shadow of a doubt for Grind Sky Ares to go in contest because they don't know what's happening. Yeah. Okay, are they gonna start this? They're still looking at the Elder Drake. Hellgirl does have her TP up at this point in the game, so this would be good. No package from Zunisha, so this fight is going to go differently. And they have a 9k gold, 9K gold lead, remember. And we haven't pointed that out a lot, but it's still looking like it's close. Just because of the fact that this is an Elder Drake, and whoever takes this, they don't... Grind Sky Ares doesn't want a repeat of Game 1. So that's why they're not taking any risks here. 
Yeah, it's crazy though. 10k gold lead for Grand Sky Aries still. So, Roy Ladies is really on a bad end here for this game number two. And the outbreak yeah. once again being started. We have this in. We have Stand United. Onto the Shen. TP ready. Like this. This would be good. So, Hell Girl, if this goes to the inhibitor turret, that is advantageous position for Grand Sky. Because they can just keep keep baiting out royal ladies and that would be good for Helgers because she, she's just going to be pushing look at angela lila she's trying to get a kill on to here for cotton candy but you pretty aggressive going in ooh, dark ooh. lightning was able to hit but she has stasis the transcendent embrace would be able to make them down and that's going to be good moonfall. The, the moonfall will be able to hit onto four but not enough damage for them to get the win there back line they still haven't taken the kill onto cotton candy the stasis oh no the bait right there two kills already on the side of royal ladies this is not going to go for the side of Grand Sky Eris because Yugen is the last member with damage on their side and no, this might be it. They're losing their ground again like what happened during game one and this is why Roy Ladies was waiting for that perfect opportunity for them to take his Elder Drake. There's still hope, there's still hope. Angelila is still alive, Yugen is still also still alive but Royal Ladies will have more chance to take the Elder Drake. And the Baron Nasher, if they take this down, this is going okay. to be a huge disadvantage for GS. Okay, they still take it, and now that's going to be it. Angela Ilada is down, and if the, she gets hit, you again, if she gets hit just once, oh, yep, no. there it is. That, there she is taken down. And this is going to be the Baron call. Remember, 40 seconds onto Yugen and Angela Ilada, and Roy Ladies would just be winning and taking this Baron pretty easily. This is going to be insane. Burn damage coming in from the Elder Drake, the Execute as well. It's got to be a huge, huge lead for Roy Ladies to match up against a team fight up against GS. And with a Baron Nasher as well in their favor, this is going to be a huge deficit for GS to fight against. Yeah. It's really great. It's really hard. Wine Sky Eris. Oh, man. They're just going to be taking the Baron. Baron and Elder Jake together with it. This is just a big win for Roy Ladies. Now, even though they had... The gold lead of Varago, almost a 10k gold lead on the side of Grand Sky. Now it's just 5k. They just traversed that big gold lead. They just lessened, shortened that gap just because of those two objectives and those one, that one big fight. Yeah, and remember, on top of the Elder Drake, on top of the Baron Dasher, they have Infernal Drake and Ocean Drake. So oh, that's man. extra 8% damage, and Ocean Drake can give you a lot of sustainability for each and every single one. Oh man, this is, this is hard. Because honestly, they just need to wait it out. They need to wait the Baron and the Elder, and, oh, the Elder Drake out. Because if they don't, Elder is just so strong. 15% HP, you're gonna get executed. That's big. That's why you need to respect yeah. what they can do right now. Let them close in the gap. Let them get those towers. It's okay. And now it's only a 1k gold lead after those towers have been taken down. And this is looking pretty good for Roy Ladies. Grind Sky Eris, they're losing a lot of these towers. Seven towers on the side of Roy Ladies. Two inhibited series. Make that eight towers down and Roy ladies are looking to get off in the nexus remember they still have the elder drake so if ever they go for this fight this might be the last stand of grand sky they need to win this fight because it is, is gonna be the win for Roy ladies if they start that's a great knock up that's four down cargo and enchant that's enough hell girl is down this the might nexus! be it ladies are taken down grind sky heiress and that is a 2-0 win for Roy ladies they took down the queens of FSL and now they're making a story of their own the comeback coming in for the semi-finals the queens have been dethroned and Roy oh, ladies wow. is ready for the grand finals wow great great win for Roy ladies again that is just another big objective that grind sky Ares has lost and Roy ladies just sweep that out after that that just snowballed in their favor and now with this Roy ladies took down the queens of fsl and even the gold medalist of c games and as I said a while ago, Infinity, this patch, this new patch, this four days that everyone is still adapting to the new patch would be the most vulnerable of Grind Sky. And that's why Roy Ladies just made sure that this would be a hard series for the Grind Sky Eras. And on top of all that, there is also an adjustment when it comes to the uh, member swaps, member switches for the mm -hmm. side of GS as well that yeah. could affect... 84k well. damage. Look at what. But yeah, what is that? I was about to say it. Like 84k damage <laughs> from Yugen. Like, what is hello? that? That's crazy, that, man. That's the biggest that one yet be... that I've seen. Yeah, yeah. 
That might be the single handedly the most damage we've seen ever in that, Wild Rift. Definitely. Ever. That's 84k onto one person. If you add every damage from the side of Grind Sky, they won't even reach 84k. Because. <laughs> <laughs> that's just so crazy good. that just it says a lot about how you can perform during this game she performs so yeah. well she made sure that our boy ladies won't be having a good time if ever angela and lila falls they won't have an easy time taking the objectives but still during that last fight boy ladies just took the time they waited for it yes they didn't have a lot of towers down they didn't have a lot of priority in lane but they were just so patient they're waiting for grind sky errors to trip and when they saw it happen, that is when they capitalize on it. Yeah, it it was just a waiting game coming in for yeah. the side of uh, so patient the, the so opposing patient. team, right? Yeah. Roy ladies was just patiently waiting for an open opening that yeah. they could just go in and just cleave throughout Grind Sky Aries, and one by one, Grind Sky Aries lost their members. Angela Lila and Yugen was alive then, but Elder Drake, if they give it. They know it's going to be a hard time. So they went Definitely. in, they tried the contest, but it was too late. Yeah. It was Roy Ladies who, who already got it. And they lost their two members that remained standing, which enabled Roy Ladies to then go for the Baron Nasher as well. Yeah, and that's why it was uh, won by Roy Ladies. That was such a great series. Honestly, it was close again. Grind Sky Aries got the advantage in the early to mid game again to their side, but it's just that the waiting game for this late game objectives is just the patience from Roy Ladies was enough to shaken the will of the members of Grind Sky Aries. And when they saw them make a mistake, that is when they go in, that is when they win the fights. And after that, as we said a while ago, also Infinity, Elder Drake is such a big objective. If you get the Elder yeah. Drake, for sure, most of the time, you're going to win. And yeah. they took it. That's why Roy Lady's got the win. I mean, execute, burn damage. Like, hello, that's too much. Help, that's it big. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just amazing. And yeah. on top of that, just imagine this series like two times of a comeback from a huge, Definitely. huge deficit yeah. into a win that was translated yeah. by Roy Ladies. Just amazing, amazing teams overall here in FSL. Yeah. Yeah, they just had the heart for the whole game and that's why the patience is a virtue as they said in the olden olden scripts so yes it's it happened during this game for royal ladies but still everyone we're just gonna be taking a short break before we head into the grand finals and we're still gonna be your casters for today m dash and i was here with infinity see you guys in just a bit <laughs> 